Hello friends. Uh, um, so in this video, I will cover about uh, HDFS from developer perspective. And before getting into HDFS, which stands for Hadoop Distributed File System, we will talk about what is a Hadoop cluster. As uh, any software, Hadoop is also a combination of uh, background process, which are called daemons, and parameter files, and storage. Uh, so it is similar to any any other software. So um, I would uh, for storage, they call it as uh, as HDFS, which is a distributed file system, and for processing, they call it as MapReduce. So in this session, we will talk about HDFS. HD, if you if you think as a developer. Uh, uh, Typically, you uh, you read data from a database or file system, and then you will process as part of your Java program. In this case, if you want to write um, MapReduce programs in Java to process the data, HDFS is the storage. So you need to uh, store data in HDFS, and you need to read data in from HDFS to process it. And uh, uh, most of those uh, common tasks are already um, uh, provided by uh, Hadoop binaries. So you can uh, leverage them to write um, uh, your MapReduce programs to process the data. So if you think HDFS as a storage perspective, you need to uh, understand subtle differences between HDFS and regular file system. And uh, then only you will be able to write uh, MapReduce programs effectively. So let me start the whiteboard and let me explain a few differences between traditional uh, storage and HDFS uh, when it comes to storing the files and then we will uh, copy data to HDFS in this session. So typically uh, if you want to process uh, before getting into that, let me explain uh, what data we want to use to process. So, so I, I will be using something called deck of cards, uh, which represents our uh, uh, playing cards deck and it has 52 records so we will try to process this data and uh, this is a very small file uh, to uh, to explain from Hadoop perspective I have uh, created a large file which is of 720 MB using the same deck of cards I just concatenated deck of cards multiple times and write into large deck and if you open it it might take a little time to open I am closing it, let me open it, yeah, it opened. If you open it, and data is same, it's just that it has uh, hundreds and thousands of deck of cards. So let me close this. So uh, let me explain how this data will be represented in traditional file system uh, versus uh, HD, uh, HDFS. So in traditional file system, when you store that, um, deck of cards it will be stored as one file in uh, whatever file system you are using in case of hdfs what will it do uh, uh, there is a concept of block size which is defaulted to 128 mb so what does that mean uh, irrespective of the size of the file it will be divided into um, uh, multiple blocks based upon this block size. So we have the large deck which is around 720 MB. So this file will be divided into four blocks. Okay. And this will be given some block ID BLK underscore 1, BLK underscore 2, BLK underscore 3, BLK underscore 4. So let me, this is traditional file system. 
which is 720 MB. This is HDFS. Now, when you actually copy this file to HDFS, what uh, will happen is from wherever you are copying, you need to have Hadoop client, and that client will divide this file into blocks. And instead of uh, typically, you will see Hadoop cluster like this. There will be a bunch of nodes. Let's take the example of three nodes because I have a, a cluster with three nodes. So I will show you how this data will be stored there. And you need to understand this to write effective MapReduce programs later. Okay. Now, as we have four blocks for this 720 MB file, uh, these blocks will be distributed um, on um, multiple nodes in the cluster. In this case, we have three nodes in the cluster. So, uh, block one might be stored here, block two might be stored here, block three will be stored here and block four might be stored here. Okay, so uh, HDFS will make sure that uh, a large file will be divided into uh, multiple blocks based upon the block size and those blocks will be stored in uh, HDFS in distributed fashion. So this is the main difference between traditional and HDFS. HDFS files will be distributed and stored into HDFS. And the main concept here is block size. And uh, then let's say there is a, a problem with uh, one of the nodes and uh, let's say this node has gone down. Then this block underscore two is not available and uh, you will not be able to read the file in sequence to create a large deck of cards if you want to read the data. For that reason, they have a concept called replication factor. Which is defaulted to 3. And based upon that, once the file is divided into um, blocks, uh, 4 blocks in this case, each block will be cloned 3 times because the replication factor is 3. So now again, let me draw, um, draw a cluster diagram. In this case, as we have only three nodes, each one will have all the four blocks. Block underscore one, block underscore two, block underscore three, block underscore four. Similar is the case with uh, node two, similar is the case with node three. So all the three nodes in our cluster will have all the four blocks. And now if this node goes down, as the data is available on other nodes, still you will be able to uh, process the data. So the Two most important concepts are block size and replication factor. Replication factor is to address uh, fault tolerance and block size is to distribute the data in HDFS on multiple no uh, nodes in the cluster. So now let us do the demo to copy that. There are many other things which you want to know if you want to master HDFS. Uh, but as a developer uh, to write MapReduce programs to process the data, this uh, knowledge is more than enough. I, I don't want to get into other details which is not relevant uh, for you at this time. So now this is our Cloudera VM which I have shown earlier and uh, we have to copy uh, these two files large deck as well as deck of cards into, um, uh, into this uh, virtual machine and uh, there are multiple ways to do so but i would i would highly recommend to use uh, winscp or uh, 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 putty to copy the files into the cloudera vm and then run a hadoop command to uh, uh, to load into hdfs so let me do that now so what you have to do is first you need to get the ip address of your virtual machine so if you go to your, uh, your virtual machine and if you click on this black icon on top, it will launch the terminal and you can run ifconfig minus a command. Okay, and then uh, uh, this, this will be your IP address. So using this IP address, and now uh, this terminal is on my Mac. If you are using Windows, you might have to use PuTTY to simulate this. So I can do SSH 
and cloudera is the username which uh, vm uses and then you can enter the ip address and then uh, password will be cloudera and then you are in uh, cloudera virtual machine so you can use any ssh based tool to copy data from your local machine which is this terminal to your uh, hdss sorry to, to your cloudera vm okay so now let me do lsltr and uh, let me scp deck of cards dot txt to my cloudera vm sorry i have to give the directory and directory is slash home slash cloudera i'm just copying to home directory and password is cloudera so file is copied now you can actually do lsltr here and it shows deck of cards which is uh, which is copied just now this time is central time uh, sorry from western time zone so it is showing uh, 639 but actually current time is 8 40 pm so now the file is copied and uh, using command line wherever your have hadoop client uh, you have hadoop client from there you can run this command in this case we have uh, uh, we are doing it from uh, uh, cloudera vm itself so uh, it has all the hadoop binaries and then you can run this command devcuffcards.txt user cloudera so minus put is the command if you want to know all the other commands you can just uh, type hadoop and uh, fs and then hit enter you will see a bunch of commands if you are familiar with linux you can go through these commands and you can uh, get uh, acclimated to all the commands uh, hadoop supports and you can experiment on your cloud vm and now to validate whether the file is copied or not you have to run hadoop ss minus ls command because we are already copied and this is the path in hdfs which it will actually copy and now you can see the file uh, here in the hdfs of your cloud or vm so one common thing people get confused is between uh, this file deck of cards which is under os level so this lsltr is a os command and you can see this file in uh, um, uh, in os level and hdfs is a distributed file system uh, which which is created when uh, hadoop is installed and uh, by default uh, the uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, the admins have to set up uh, a user space for you in this case this cloudera os user got a user space like slash user slash cloudera and then you can uh, copy files into that so as uh, as in any other file system you might run into permission issues and all those things you have to sort it out with your uh, admins if you are working in a production environment so but for our cloudera vm cloudera will have uh, uh, appropriate permissions on slash user slash cloudera so you need not struggle about permission issues as long as you are copying files under slash user slash cloudera okay now we have the file in uh, we have copied this file from local file system into hdfs so uh, we have validated from command line uh, and we have created file from command line okay now what we will do is there is another tool called hue which is already uh, uh, installed as part of this cloud vm installation and using uh, hue also you can upload files into hdfs and uh, where 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 you need to launch hue you can launch it from your uh, uh, from your uh, pc so in my case i have opened uh, firefox on my mac and now i want to uh, connect to sorry i want to connect to this ip
and you can give port number 8888 you will be running on web server uh, with port number 8888 and then it will launch the hue and the username and password for hue for cloudera vm is cloudera cloudera and then you can click enter and then you are in hue so you can go to something called file browser on the right hand side which is to manage htfs and click on it and then uh, the deck of cards is already created here okay now you can upload large deck from here so we are uploading from our local file system to hdfs using a web interface without struggling on the command line now you can go to the location where is it personal getting started series hard up and then we are trying to copy large deck what happened let me try it again i think it is not yeah it is running so it is copying and then uh, you can uh, when you install hdfs uh, there is a, a daemon process which supports a, a hdfs called name node and using name node name node is the one which will have all the metadata of your files so as i have explained in the picture a file will be divided into blocks and those blocks will be distributed on uh, uh, multiple nodes in the cluster uh, which is called as block locations so there should be a mapping between your file name which is large deck in this case and the blocks uh, the four blocks and then uh, each one is copied to three locations so there will be a uh, bunch of metadata which needs to be stored somewhere and that somewhere is name node so if you can access the name node you can see all the information about your files and in this case the way to check the information about your files is by go using the port number 50070 using your name node ip address it will uh, so this is this is provided by apache hadoop itself and uh, this will provide a uh, lot of information about your file system which will be deployed uh, irrespective of version of hadoop you you use you you can go to utilities and you can click on browse the file system and even hdfs starts with root file system which is slash like linux or unix you can click on user and then uh, we have copied to cloudera and you can click on that and you can see that there are uh, uh, two files that are copied uh, to this uh, to this uh, cloudera vm and then to to see how the data is uh, copied to hdfs you can click on this file on your name node ui and it will tell you the block information Uh, block id so and uh, block pool id which is internally managed which you need not uh, worry about um, but for each block you will see this information so there is only one block so there is only one entry and the size of the file is 693 bytes now if you click on large deck there are five uh, six blocks let me show you again if you click on deck of cards there is only one block okay but if you click on large deck the block size is 128 mb and it has 1 2 3 4 5 6 blocks uh, so the first four one will have 128 mb each which will be uh, uh, how much 640 and then the last one will have uh, rest of the uh, file so if you click on it it, ha- it is 53 mb but all the other files are uh, 128 mb and uh, the block ids uh, will be uh, given in ascending order as per the file so the first 128 mb will get block 0 the second 128 mb will get block 1 so on and the last one uh, last whatever is remaining will will get the last block id 
so that is about hdfs and if you have multiple nodes in the cluster uh, you uh, you will see multiple uh, 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 instances but as we have only one node in the cluster there is only one copy of the uh, of each of the block um, uh, if you have multiple nodes you will see multiple uh, uh, all the locations where the file is copied so in this case it is saying the file is on quickstart.cloudera which is our uh, cloudera vm name let me show you on my other hadoop cluster where i have three nodes on one of the sample file and i will tell you what i am talking about so i have a nysc data in this uh, which is only 25 mb so there will be only one block for this but because of the replication factor 3 you will see uh, three locations for this so in this case the file is copied uh, on three nodes in the cluster because the replication factor is three and as the file size is less than 128 mb there is, a, there is only one block associated with it so i hope you enjoyed this um, basic session about hdfs uh, this is more than enough for uh, development uh, of map reduce programs on top of hdfs uh, but uh, certification and interview uh, might uh, demand more uh, but to uh, to get started with Hadoop map reducing uh, map reduce programming for Hadoop using Java, uh, this knowledge of HDFS is more than enough. And the most important concepts are replication factor and block size. And you need to understand that HDFS is nothing but a distributed file system, uh, and map reduce is nothing but a distributed computing framework which can work on top of distributed file system HDFS. I hope you enjoy this session. Thank you.